We welcome to the uh, program the Trump Organization Executive Vice President uh, and a host of Triggered with Don Jr., Donald Trump Jr. Hey, Don, how are you? How's it going? Good to be with you guys. Uh, it's good to be with you. I just uh, talked to your sister-in-law, Laura, uh, Laura, uh, last hour, uh, and we, we got the take on the convention. I don't know what their bold vision is, but based on the number of times they talked about your father, I think the bold vision for America is Donald Trump. I think that's what they're selling. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly, uh, because I well, haven't really heard a vision. Of, it's sort of hard to believe. I haven't heard a vision. I've seen a lot of projection. Uh, I mean, the one that really got me was watching this lady. She got up there hysterical, saying that, you know, if Donald Trump gets in there, he would do the unthinkable and he would weaponize the Justice Department against his political enemies. <laughs> he would utilize the FBI <laughs> to, to arrest them and go. And I'm sitting there being like, oh, my God. Like, I, I, honestly, I, I don't know. Do they do they not know? Do, like, do they have they not been it, watching it for is, the last three years? I mean, it's really mind boggling. I can't tell if they would be like think that they're doing the right thing and that it's totally within the norm. And if we responded even remotely in kind, uh, that that would be some sort of violation of, of the standards that they've been breaking yeah. for years now. It's, yeah. it's mind boggling. I can't figure it out. I know. We, we think that they either uh, think that they're invincible at this point and they can say anything. Or they believe in the Hitler line, repeat a lie long enough, and it becomes the truth. Or uh, they're just, they just think their, their uh, voters are just dumb as a box of rocks. But those well, are the only answers are. we I can mean, come I, up I, with. You, you have no choice but to believe that at this point. Just look at them. I mean, I'm looking at the DNC, you know, both inside and out. And I can't imagine too many Americans, you know, want their children growing up in a, in a country like that. There's fires and looting yeah. and rioting. They don't know what to agree upon amongst themselves. They're supporting terror organizations and they're, you know, giving out, uh, you know, I made a joke on my, my triggered podcast on rumble a, a couple of weeks ago about, Hey guys, if you know, the people who've been screaming about democracy, they're, they're, they're shoving it in your face, putting in Kamala Harris. She got zero votes. They overrode the process. They set up a coup. You know, if you really want to preserve democracy, you know, vote Donald Trump. He'll fix the economy. He'll stop the wars. And, you know, in four short years, you can go back to trying to do your, like, drive through abortions and all the other nonsense. And I, I said it tongue in cheek. And there's literally an abortion and vasectomy ban. To be clear, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely against, you know, the vasectomy ban for the people at the DNC that I've seen so far. I mean... You know, I, I got to be honest, it's probably a, a solid idea. I, I think they should use it, and perhaps we should raise the money to make sure it's available for them at all times for free. But, yeah. like, you know, me, like, literally trying to make a parody of some of these things, they're actually doing those things in real life. I know. It's mind-boggling. I know. I know. Um, and nobody's talking about what's outside besides the vasectomy trucks. And that's the extremist groups. There was a, uh, uh, some research that came out from Capital Research Center, uh, and they had a very, very uh, uh, tight description of terrorist groups. Uh, it has to be somebody who has actually said or pledged support to one of these terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda. They found 150 of these that support terrorism or identify as Marxist, communist, or anic uh, uh, an an oh, I can't say it. And somebody who's into to anarchy um, and have, have said that they are coming out to collapse the, the government. And you have... Yeah. You have these groups passing things out. Armed resistance is the only answer. End is Israel. Stand with Hamas. Um, they're standing with the Muslim Brotherhood, the Communist Party of the Philippines, the Taliban. It's crazy. And nobody's talking about it. it, it well, and no, no one's talking about the, the obvious, which is, you know, Kamala Harris hasn't done an interview in a month. They're letting her yeah. run the Joe Biden basement, you know, hide her in the basement campaign because they understand she doesn't have, you know, the, the personality to actually do these things proper. But, I mean, think of how insane that is. They're then usurping some of our ideas, but they go yeah. totally contrary to everything that Kamala Harris voted for. You know, she was, right. she, she's not going to do taxes on tips now, but she was the tie-breaking vote in the Inflation Reduction Act, which literally put 86,000 IRS agents in there to literally go after people to make sure that their tips were being taxed. Uh, you know, it, yeah. and no one... 
No one says a word. You know, she says she's going to shut down the border. Well, what's she been doing? Glenn, I'd argue yeah. she's the most powerful vice president we've probably had in certainly yes. in recent times because she's serving under someone who we all acknowledge now, even the left acknowledges, is totally inept. He's been incapacitated for his entire presidency. She could have done any one of the things she's talking about doing, uh, but opts not to. It's, uh, it, it's, my, it's, it's insane. Why didn't so, she do it? You could have done it over the last three and a half years. Oh, you're going to do it now? Why don't you start today? You don't have to wait till January 20th. You're I literally know. the most powerful person probably in government because it ain't Joe Biden. Yeah, I know. He's not even threat. Um, so you've been named to the transition team. Uh, yeah. for y- your father. And can you, can you give me some idea? Are you, are you looking for people or will you put people in that truly understand the depth of the deep state and people that yeah. are willing to fire all of these people? I mean, to, it's going to take, excuse my expression, yeah. balls of steel to do this. Oh yeah. And no, listen, that, that's, uh, that's literally why I wanted to be on transition. It's literally not to appoint actually a single person. It's to block all of the bad actors. And there's plenty of them. And that's, mm. that's the difference between now uh, you know, and 16. 16, we didn't know. You, know, yeah. you had to fill, you know, at the time, there right. was 4,000 positions in the plum book. And that's the book that the president assigns these roles. It's like, we didn't know any of them. I mean, my father had spent two days in D.C. in his entire life prior to winning the presidency. Uh, we had no idea where to start. Now we know. Uh, we've seen the bad actors. We've seen what the ones who tell you they're going to be loyal or, you know, five minutes after you win, they, you know, they put out a nice tweet negating, you know, seven years of hate. And those are the guys, uh, the ones that are your supposed friends. They're actually much more wor- you know, much worse than the Democrats. Uh, that you assume they're actually doing the yeah, right thing yeah. by you because they supposedly believe these things. But even if they believe them, they're subverting you across the way. So you yeah. know, I got on there. My brother got on. And the first thing we said is, yeah, those people aren't getting jobs. We, we, we don't Good. want them in our administration. We don't need that. You know, we got four years to fix something. Now we have an understanding of how that works. We know who the good people are and the bad people are. So, you know, hey, it's, it's you know, beyond, beyond the 4,000 jobs, it's tens of thousands of jobs. So, you know, I, I don't know that it'll be perfect, but I'm getting involved to make sure it's as perfect as it possibly can be. Well, I am hoping that the price of housing in the D.C. area collapses because your your father has won and everybody knows oh crap they're just going to be cutting all these jobs and there's plenty of housing for people that are are living around the capital um the uh endorsement from rfk do you think that's coming listen i I hope so uh you know i think rfk i think he's a smart guy i think he's actually got very good views on certain things i think there's other things you know we're going to disagree with him on but i think it, it shows sort of a a unity against literally, you know, you mentioned it uh, before I hopped on about the, the communism that we are up against. It's not hyperbole yeah. anymore. Yeah. It's not like, Oh, they're just a little bit more left than us. It's not, you know, the, these people, you know, she's talking about, we want to set up price fixing and we want to set up this and we're going to be auditing businesses and we're going to take away your business and we're going to take away your children. If we you know, can't do, uh, you know, drive through, you know, transgender surgeries for minors without parental consent, right. it, it, right. it, it, they've lost their minds. And so, you know, I love the idea. I love the idea of, you know, giving him, you know, some sort of role in some sort of, you know, major, uh, you know, three-letter entity or whatever it may be and let him blow it up. Uh, I, I think that's what we need. And so I think that kind of unity, even where there may be certain disagreements on certain things, I think he could be a really great asset for that. I think he could bring people together. And I think it shows a strong, uh, you know, a strong opposition to what we are up against, which is just abject insanity. And I think if we had real unity – uh, across independence and others in America to stand up for what we know is coming, what the media is doing a very good job hiding uh, from us, which is the reality of the Kamala Harris uh, platform, amazing. which is just a continuation of the Biden administration's platform. You know, we don't need another four years of this. What's, what's unique with this election, we had four years under Trump. We've had <laughs> four years under Biden. When were you better off? It's sort of a no-brainer. And yet, you know, when you're up against the trillion-dollar institution of tech, trillion dollars of mainstream media functioning as the marketing arm of the Democrat Party, you know, it, it, it's hard to get a fair shake. And so we have to expose that. And the more people that we had on, on board, uh, the better. So I'd, I'd certainly be open and welcome to the idea, frankly. Uh, I, I, uh, I have to tell you, and I, I, I asked your uh, sister-in-law this about an hour ago. Um, I, I, you know, th- there are things coming out of the White House right now. For instance, new nuclear strategy 
to go against China, Russia, and North Korea at the same time. Nuclear uh, solutions. And there's no way this president got up in the morning and said, you know what, I'm, I'm worried about this and we've got to put these things. Who is the president of the United States? Because the person that is yeah. controlling it now is going to be the person that controls it when Kamala gets in. And it doesn't seem like it matters to anyone that this guy isn't running the country right now. Who is? I, I, honestly, I, I couldn't tell you. I assume it's one of the Obama lackeys or Susan Rice or Valerie Jarrett or, you know, some of the uh, some of the really bad actors that we've seen, you know, working abroad, you know, starting wars and, you know, continuing them forever. Uh, but I mean, think about that. I mean, uh, coming up with nuclear plans. Now, we are much closer to nuclear war, and that's even according to Biden's yeah. own administration than we have been since the Cuban Missile, missile Crisis. But we made that happen. You know, uh, yes. we gave Putin every excuse he needed to invade Ukraine. I'm not saying he's a good guy. I'm not saying he wouldn't have done it maybe eventually anyway. But the deal breaker was always moving NATO into Ukraine. And so we had a 500, you know, 1,000 mile long buffer zone. And we just said, you know what, let's get rid of that buffer zone. We'll put NATO right up on Russia's border. So if they were going to do it, we certainly gave them every excuse imaginable. Uh, you know, they had a peace deal ready early on in this thing. They would have signed it. But no, no, no. We wanted to keep the war machine going. The war machine watched you know, big pharma get rich during COVID. And they're saying, no, 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 it's our turn back at the trough. We hadn't had a war in like six weeks. Uh, you know, it's time to make some more money again. Uh, it, it's asinine. But, but these people are morons, and they have no incentive to actually get to peace, right? You, you stop this war by cutting yeah. off the money. Again, the second that goes away, uh, they're at the table in two seconds. Uh, certainly Zelensky is. Uh, and that's how, you, that's how you're going to negotiate peace. My father understands how to do that. Kamala Harris not only doesn't understand how to do it, but she has no desire to do it because her friends are probably getting rich from it. Yeah, it is. It's a remarkable time that we uh, we live in uh, and we pray for you and your family uh, every day. We pray for our country as well. I am more convinced than ever as you watch things unfold over in Europe that this whole thing is a show. Your 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 father is, I believe, the only man uh, that can make a difference and stop this global takeover of the West. But we're getting down to the wire. What's happening over in Europe, nobody is paying attention to. But how did we get all of the same policies in every Western country that is setting every Western country on fire? And the yeah, America no, I, First watching, agenda is the way to stop it. I'm, I'm watching what's going on over in the U.K. where that little, you know, clown... Uh, police chief, we're going to yeah. extradite and arrest people for breaking, you know, you say a mean tweet and they're going to arrest you in America, extradite you to the UK and put you in jail. I'm saying people, literally people like we really hate that these illegal immigrants are curb stomping us in the street. We really, we really think that's terrible. How dare you say that about the immigrants? You know what happens to the person actually doing the curb stomping? Nothing. You know, they're probably yeah. on a government voucher program getting money to beat the crap out of the people yeah. in the country that you know took them in. It's, yes. it's mind-boggling. And I'm watching these people. I'm, I'm watching the videos of the judges handing out these sentences for 20 months, 24 months, for people that are just like, hey, man, I'm sick of this crap. What's going on? Not, it's not even a racist. It's, just, it, it, it's not hate speech. It's just common sense. Yeah. It's basic yeah. vernacular. That, hey, I don't want to get beat up in my streets, and it's only happening because of this immigration. Because, of course, it is. But it, it doesn't matter to them. And I'm watching, like, it's, it's literally like they're, they're destroying their own civilization and they're just willingly yeah. doing it. I've, I've never seen anything yeah. like it. Um, uh, Don, always good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. Uh, and, uh, Thank you. And uh, we'll do anything we can to help. Thank you. Donald uh, Trump Jr. You bet. 